All right, we just go and get in some NBA action. The preseason is still underway, but opening night is almost upon us. This uh, mini marathon of an offseason is almost complete with opening night slated for December 22nd. On that Tuesday, Golden State will head to Brooklyn while the Clippers and Lakers kick it off in L.A. So let's go ahead and lay it out for a preview of the 2021-2022 season, and let's answer some questions. And we'll go ahead and we'll start off by zooming out a little bit. So go ahead and give me your uh, th- kind of three or four or so your biggest storylines, you know, just heading into the season, like l- the most interesting things you're looking for. Okay, so storyline. So, all right, <laughs> well, one is <laughs> the KD, the Durantula, you know, he coming back, suiting up, uh, looking like he ready to do what he got to do. Um, he looking good in preseason. I, I can't say the same about, you know, his dynamic with Kyrie. Kyrie, you know, he, he's more into lighting Sage up before the game and bull crap like that. Um, so I don't, I don't really know about that dynamic, but I do know Kevin Durant coming back looking good is definitely a story because we all know if he does what he we know he can do, he's an MVP candidate and there's nothing to be argued about. Um, then my second subject is where will James Harden land? Um, I remember when we first started talking about the James Harden requesting a trade, it was all about the 76ers. Then we sprinkled in a little Miami. Now I'm hearing it's to open up to non-contenders now. So that's how bad he wanna he wants to leave. He showed up to um the one recent game looking like, you know, he been at eat all you can eat, you know, looking pretty miscellent, miscellent tired, man, if I must say so myself. Um, looking a little, you know, thick around the waist, as they say. Uh, so clearly his head is not where you want it to be if you're the Houston Rockets organization. So it, it seems to me that he will be on the move somewhere it's very possible. Where? Very interesting, because I think uh, – you know, a player like James Harden can take you from, you know, not even getting talked about to, you know, playoff contender, depending on what team you go to. So very interesting in that. And then also, I want to know, is Doc, will Doc Rivers be able to work with the 76ers? Um, now, we're trying to figure out what version of the 76ers he will have. Will he have a James Her- James Harden and MB mix or will he have a Ben Simmons and MB mix? Either way, this got to work for Doc. Because if it don't, it's time to start looking at college jobs, Doc. Because you might be done in the, in, in the old National Basketball Association. I'm just saying. You, you, you've been out here. There's only so much juice you can squeeze. And you at the very end of it, buddy. So, um, you know, those are some of the, the, the highlights uh, that, that I'm very interested in seeing. And then, you know, I, I really, I, I'm about to go into my next subjects, but yeah, th- those are the three, what you were excited about seeing. This yeah, season. I'm, uh, I kind of got some of the same things. I, I think that one of the ones I had you didn't was uh, the Boston Celtics. I think that they are one of the more interesting teams atop the Eastern Conference. I think that you look at a lot of other teams getting better. We know the Sixers are getting better. The Bucks got, uh, you know, pretty much unquestionably better. They got the Celtics got worse for now because they court, they lost Gordon Hayward. They didn't really put any massive thing together. And we, we kind of expect, again, the, the Tatum Brown thing. We just, I guess we expect them to just get better forever, but we know that at some point that's going to about hit a ceiling. Maybe it did last year. Maybe it didn't, but they still will have Kemba. They'll have Tatum. Um, they'll have Brown, but they did get a $27 million trade exception. Now they don't have to use that all at one time, but more or less what that means is they got some re- cap relief with the Gordon Hayward trade. They've got some room and some ammo. Now they aren't likely to do anything before the season starts in a couple days, but as the season goes on, you know, maybe who do they turn Target. Who do they, they go after an expiring contract? They got to make room for. Like, how do they? How do they work what they did get from Hayward? And how do the Celtics, you know, make a play? Because we kept thinking you know, this, this team's a, a move or two away, but you know, are they going to be able to make that right move? The James Harden thing too is interesting because you, you had all the reports this week of uh, it, it, all this bad stuffs coming out about James Harden and how he ran the whole team and how you know whatever Harden said when all this other stuff and it. I'm wondering if that's going to start impacting his trade value. Our team's going to go, well, he scores 34 a night, but, you know, he's out here clowning around in, in, at the club and whatever else. Or 
if that maybe it's just some overstated stuff, like maybe just bad actors that don't have his, you know, best interests at heart, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, sometimes like when these things fall apart, like all these reports come out after the fact and it's like, yeah, well, where was this, you know, three weeks ago? So I don't know, but, but that, that trade saga will be fascinating to follow because it does not appear he wants to play there, but if I'm the Rockets, man, I'm just, I'm getting whatever I want to get for him. You know, I, I'm not settling for one or two trade packages. And I think the Brooklyn thing is going to surprise a lot of people. I think the Brooklyn Nets are going to be really good. I, I think that a lot of this Kyrie stuff and this, it's, he doesn't have basketball right now. So it's a, it's, he's got other things to fill his time. I think when basketball starts, Kyrie will quiet down. He'll, he'll put his head down and get in the game. He's got a star he can play with now. I think it's a perfect fit for him that they can make it work. And I, I think Kevin Durant is going to be a really, really good player still. And I think that he will bounce back from that serious injury better than most players would because of his skill set. So that's, those are the big three things I'm looking for. And I can also slide in a quick minor fourth one. Um, I've been watching Obi Toppin a little bit from the Knicks. That guy's gonna be really good. I'm just gonna throw that in wherever. I, I think the Knicks may have just accidentally found like a like a, like a superstar. <laughs> I mean, I don't. That guy just seems to have like star written on him. I don't know. But we'll, we'll move on. We got other ones. So uh, those are our biggest um, sort of uh, storylines. So uh, now, give me your biggest surprises from each conference, and kind of thinking about it as you know, a team that maybe was bad last year that'll be good now, and or you know, a team that was good last year that may go ahead and slip back further. All right, so yeah, I start with the Western Conference. Um, I think the Suns got a, the Phoenix Suns have a good chance of being a top four seed in the Western Conference. Listen, before you know, chop my head off. Hey, you oh, can't be well, serious. I, I agree. I, Just the Western Conference, man, show some respect. But listen, I am showing some respect. I think, listen, you, if you actually break down like how complete teams are, the Suns looking like one of the more complete teams. They got an influx of young talent. Now they brought Chris Paul over here to coach him. I was watching a game with him the other day. He's over there on the Phoenix Sun coaching up the young players. That is what a team like this need. This is why Chris Paul was so valuable in the offseason because those young teams was like, did you see what he did with OKC? Oh, we got to get us some of that. I, I believe in Chris Paul enough as a leader to think this team has a chance to be a top four team. Now you say, well, if they're going to be a top four team, that means it was a team that was around that that won't be a top four team or a playoff team. Yeah, absolutely right. That team is one Houston Rockets. I think the Houston Rockets are going to go from being a, a you know a a, a a perim you know a team that's usually at the top of the Western Conference mountain per se to. They're, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. And if they do, they're going to be a low seed and they probably get swept in the first round or something. I don't. I think Houston had lost their juice. So I think they take a huge step back and I think the Suns take a huge step forward. Now, let's talk about the Eastern Conference. Hey, I think the Hornets finally got a chance to make a little noise in the East. And, and listen, I'm not saying, I'm not giving them the same, you know, uh, green light that I'm giving the Suns, but I do think they can make the playoffs. Um, will they win a series? Mm, that's still yet to be um, determined. But from what I've seen, I think they can make the playoffs because in the Eastern Conference, you can make the playoffs with a losing record as the seven and eight seed. Um, so I do think the Hornets could be a team that does that. And um, I think this year, also is a year that maybe the Hawks can make the playoffs. So that's two teams that didn't make the playoffs last year that I think could make the playoffs this year. I like what Trey Young brings to that team. I like what Atlanta did team. in the offseason. A whole new team, uh, basically. I mean, they built pretty much a whole new team. I mean, they got some, right. some players. Right. And I, I, I like that the Hawks organization showed enough confidence in Trey Young to say, hey, let's go out here and get him some pieces. Let's try to help him win. We don't want to waste his talent. We'll see if it worked, but I like it. I like the look of it. So it is what it is. Um, so I think those two teams can go in the playoffs. And then the teams I see um, taking a step back, you know, what did Orlando do that was impressive this offseason? I don't know. Um, so I don't, I don't, I'm not particularly thinking we're going to see Orlando, like, floundering around, you know. Um, Indiana, you know, Oladipo ain't happy. He he say he, he don't have a problem. I don't know. That's what he's supposed to say. But I'm not seeing a whole lot of movement in Indiana that makes me think, oh, this team will be back. We'll see. Um, they was a surprise team sort of last year with Oladipo out. 
and um, uh, TJ Warren turning into you know you get bubble TJ Warren, you might win the championship, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> <laughs> they surprised a lot of people last year, but I, I don't think they'll do that this year. So I think Indiana takes a step back as well. So yeah, I think those are two new teams that we'll see in the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. So th- those are my two surprises from each conference. All right. Uh, I got one for you for each side. Uh, starting the Eastern Conference, uh, I think Chicago Bulls are, are poised to get back to the playoffs for the first time in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. I, I, one, number one, uh, we, we have Billy Donovan in the house. I have a lot of respect for what he does and how good of a coach he is. I think he's a lot better than people maybe give him credit for. I don't know if Billy Donovan was the best guy in OKC to manage all the different stars running all over the place, but the Bulls are not a, a team with a bunch of old heads that all have their own agendas. Like the, the Bulls are a young team, and with Billy Donovan's impeccable college resume, maybe he's a lot better suited to develop a team like this. You've got Kobe White, Wendell Carter Jr., uh, Lori Markinen, uh, Zach Levine, and, um, you know, you've just drafted number four overall, Patrick Williams, who preseason looks really good. I mean, Patrick Williams looks like a player that maybe won't be like, you know, all NBA level every year, but he looks like a guy that's going to hit the floor immediately and just be a, a contributor to the team. And if he is, and you've got all these other guys that kind of come around and, and Donovan can kind of figure out the right fit for these guys, they, they only won 22 games last year. They could win a lot more than that this year. I mean, they could easily double that win total. I mean, I, I think they could be, you know, maybe not – they're not going to go in the playoffs and go destroy Milwaukee or something. But this is a team I think could get back to the playoffs or at least be very, very competitive. So like you said, East, they got a lot of teams in that bottom part. Like, after you're like five or six really, really good teams, it's just a lot of question marks in the back half. Um, but I think the Bulls are going to be really competitive. I, I'm looking forward to watching them this year. And the Western Conference, this one's probably not all that of a hot take, but I, I think the Spurs collapse continues. I think the San Antonio Spurs, we know them, are pretty much at an end. Obviously, they missed the playoffs for the first time in probably either of our lifetimes, you know, this, this year. <laughs> yeah. And we, we yeah. kind of chalked it up to the bubble and the, and the COVID and all that stuff. I think that the Spurs have lost that ability to always have a quality veteran guys that really can win you championships. And they've kind of shifted to the young talent development. I don't know if that Greg Popovich is really the guy to do that. And you got Marcus Aldridge is getting old. You know, DeMar DeRozan just doesn't, he just doesn't fit in a modern NBA that well. You've got to really fit him around a team. And I don't think the Spurs do that. You know, Deontay Murray just kind of does stuff, but he's not consistent. It, it's, and you've got some guys on the bench that could all be kind of good, but then they could all kind of go not that great either. And it just feels like that, you know, again, we all know that someone has to absorb the losses. I mean, you can only win, you know, there's one team can only win every game. And I just feel like a lot, they're going to absorb a lot of the, the heat in the Western conference. They're going to be the team that winds up just be on the wrong end of a lot of close games. And I think they're going to be you know, not very good next year at all. So that covers uh, that for each side. Um, and, and I like yours. I think the Suns, you know, real quick, uh, people got, people got to respect that. Chris Paul had Shy Gilgis Alexander and Steven Adams. Look what he just did. He's now he's going to get Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. I think in a right. nutshell, both those guys are better than who I just mentioned. Um, right. Although, you know, Alexander is definitely a player on the rise, but Devin Booker is already that dude, and DeAndre Ayton is going to be getting there pretty soon. Right. It could be really good, too. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's knock the rest of these out pretty quick. Uh, we got a Western Conference uh, and Eastern Conference uh, predictions as far as just who you think will be in the Western Conference and Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, um, starting with the Eastern Conference Finals, until I see, you know – Something that changed my mind right now. I got to go with the Knicks. And, I mean, not Knicks. <laughs> Definitely not the Knicks. Definitely not the I'm so, ew. Whoa. Uh, I not the call Knicks. that a Freudian slip, folks. Yeah, yeah. That's a, um, no, uh, the Nets, the, the uh, Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, listen, and, and the reason being, until I see something else, you have the first and second best players in the Eastern Conference Finals right there. No, however you put it, Durant and – and um, the Greek Freak are one and two in the Eastern Conference. I, if you got a different, you know, scale, come holler at me. Let's debate. But I think those are the two best players in the Eastern Conference. So as of right now, those are the two teams I think will meet each other. And then in Western Conference, I think um, we're going to get the match that we should have got this year, the Lakers and Clippers. Listen, I know a lot of teams did a lot of upgrading, but – I can't say no team in the Western Conference did more upgrading than the Lakers. The Lakers had a, a pretty outstanding offseason. And the Clippers didn't do a whole lot, but they're still bringing back the mainframe, you know, minus Montrez Harrell. But they're bringing back, you know, pretty much the rest of those guys that made that team 
or at least made us think they was going to be what they was going to be. And listen, Tyrod Lou is calling the plays now instead of Doc Rivers. I think that's going to make a, 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 a that's going to make somewhat of a um, change because listen, you know, when Jay's on the show, he likes to say that, hey, we haven't seen Tyrod Lou coach a team without LeBron James, which is true. But we have seen him manage stars like LeBron James. And I think that is one of his strongest suits. I, and I think we're going to see that this year with the Clippers. So I expect to see the uh, Lakers and Clippers in the Western Conference and the Nets and Bucks in the Eastern Conference. All right. Um, I'm great minds take alike, I guess. I also have the Nets and the Bucks. Um, you know, and it's funny that neither one of us said the Miami Heat, and we're just neither one of us are buying that the Heat are going to be able to bring it back, even though we've already kind of said that nothing really changed. It's the same Heat team. All their young guys are coming back. You think most of them will be getting better. Jimmy Butler's back. So it's funny that we both view that as sort of a lightning in the bottle sort of year, um, yeah. which could be wrong. I mean, the, the whole the whole Nets thing could be falling apart with KD on his burners on Twitter and everything else. Like, it might blow up. But again, like like I, I said earlier, and you just said the Nets, you know, project to be a great team. I think Steve Nash is going to be able to manage their, their, their you know, <laughs> stars and whatnot very well, to put it lightly. And they're going to be able to put it together. And I also, again, think KD coming off that injury, his skill set, he's going to be good no matter what. I mean, he, he can be out there in a wheelchair and he'd be better than half the players on the floor. So, you know, that that's that there. And then I, I do have the Mavericks taking on the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. I, I think that the Lakers will probably win. But I do think the Mavericks are – I think what the thing is the Mavericks is this. If, if you give me the roster and the depth chart today – and you say they're all healthy and whatever else. I don't think they're a Western Conference Finals team, but I think the Mavericks at some point in the season are going to make, like, the biggest trade of the season. I'm not sure who they're going to get, but I think that they're going to be really good to start, but it's going to be evident that, yeah, you got some you know, Luka and Kristaps are doing their thing, but this, you just need something else here to finish this together, and they're going to find whoever that is with trades, with contracts. They got some assets. They will put some picks. I think the Mavericks are going to jump all in this season at some point, and they're gonna they're gonna go get somebody, and they're gonna be the team that really, um, you know, makes a big splash, and they're gonna get to the Western Conference Finals. All right. So with that in mind, uh, only thing that's left now, um, MVP and your uh, champion prediction. All right. So listen up, listeners, watchers. Please don't shoot me up. But if you do disagree with what I got to say, hey, you know, all social media has a comment box, so you can put in your your agreement or disagreement you can tell me why, why i'm right and why i'm wrong same thing with with cody and you know we, let's debate let's talk about it but listen i think the mvp this year gonna be i'm really i'm really really high on the phoenix sun i think devin booker got a chance to be mvp this year he gonna have a guy on the team that's gonna take over majority of the ball handling all he's gonna have to do is shoot and play defense i think me and you can it's both true. agree that he can shoot the ball that he can do yeah. he's not bad and he's not bad on defense when he actually get a chance so you got deandre aiden listen you he's protecting the rim so all you got to do is keep him in front of you i think that's going to be a recipe and i and like i said i, I do think the Suns are going to catch people by surprise they're not going to understand the impact that chris paul is going to have on this team and i, I think they're going to catch some people by surprise and then the championship, as of right now, dream matchup. I got to go with the Lakers and Nets. I would love to see the Lakers and Nets. Uh, man, KD going against LeBron again. LeBron going against Kyrie. Like, uh, one team, you know, one of the older rosters. The other team, one of the younger rosters. It's just like, you know, AD in the mix. You know, it's it just, I, that's just fireworks to me. So I would love to see the Lakers versus Nets. And then, of course, if I had to take the champion, I'm, I'm going with the Lakers again. You know, I can't bet, bet against the Kings. So, yeah, that uh, Devin Booker would be my MVP. Lakers versus Nets in the NBA Finals. And then the Lakers holding up the trophy two times. Well, once again, uh, great minds. I, I will say I did not have the Devin Booker pick, I, absolutely. But I like that. I really do. Like I just said, I like that. That's a that's a really kind of – it's a little off the wall. But, it, hey, I mean, we, we know this dude can – I mean, he scored 70 before. I mean, you know. Um, I, I have Luka. I have Luka Doncic winning it. Um, I think that Luka is just such a complete player in this, in this day and age. I think that he's going to be so good for years to come that I think that – 
statistically, he's going to be just overwhelming. I mean, like what he can do. And I think that the Mavericks, of course, are going to be really good. I've been going to Western Conference Finals. So I think all those things considered and all that wrapped up, I think that Luka is going to uh, be a, definitely a front runner for MVP, especially if, you know, James Harden gets kicked off halfway through the year and Westbrook's kind of sharing minutes with um, with Bradley Beal and sharing shots of Bradley Beal. You know, maybe some of the our more normal contenders. Also, Giannis is a better team. He may have some of his workload off of me, but I think that the, the Mavericks will still run through Luka and I think he'll have you know a dominant statistical season and I agree I think the Lakers are going to repeat as champions I don't know if they're going to play the Nets or the Bucks um I, I would maybe put some more money on the Bucks just because like they really should be in the, the finals I mean with this roster but um it's hard. Like you look at the Lakers, they just, they got better. I mean, they, they flat out got better and they didn't really lose anything to, to like get better. You know I mean? They just, they got better. And, and you look at just what they just did and really how much they didn't really have to sweat. I, I just can't imagine right now, any team dethroning them as long as father time does not start catching LeBron, but Hey, he's 36. And so far the guy hadn't shown up at all. So um, I, I think the father time might take another year off and, like Go to the five time gonna uh, deliver to the wrong house again. <laughs> no, it's always next year. <laughs>